Welcome to my step-by-step -step guide to creating soft, fluttery sets of hybrid lash extensions. Today, I'm going to share all my years of experience in creating beautifully natural looking lashes and hopefully leave you feeling super confident to do the same. My tutorial includes everything you need to know from preparation, design to application. I'll share all my inside tips, preferred products and techniques. If you'd like to elevate your lash skills and learn all you can about creating flawless, beautifully natural looking hybrid sets, hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell and let's get going. Good preparation is a vital step in creating a beautiful set of lashes that will have great retention for your client. I always start by double cleansing the lashes even if my client isn't wearing eye makeup. I use a foaming lash shampoo applied over the lid and lashes and make sure I work the product into and around the area. I then use a lint-free protein remover pad for the second cleanse. I lay them over my client's eyes and apply a light pressure with fingertips. This helps to begin to relax my client and remove any remaining residue from the lashes. Next step in preparing the lashes is to comb them through. I like to use a silicon wand for this and will use it throughout the treatment and then give it to my client as part of their aftercare. I then ask my client to open her eyes so that I can protect the lower lash line with gel pads. In advance, I prepare small pieces of silicone tape. The one I'm using here is the blue one made by 3M. I'll leave links to all the products I mentioned in the description box. I place them close to the lash line in a V shape. The silicone tape is designed so that it can be easily and cleanly removed without disturbing the skin or causing any discomfort. Now I ask my client to close her eyes make some final adjustments to the gel pads and check with her that they're comfortable. I now place a tissue and a small towel over her forehead for comfort. Next, I'll use a lash primer applied with a fine tip tint brush. This helps to remove any final oils or debris on the lashes and ensures a longer lasting secure bond between the extensions and the natural lashes. It is particularly good for clients with oilier skin types. After the final lash preparations are complete, I will use a lash mapping technique to mark out on the gel pads the style and design of the lashes. Today I'm using C curls in the inner corners, transitioning to double C curls from approximately a third of the way out from the inner corner right through to the outer edge of the eye. To create an eye opening natural effect, the longest lashes will be placed in the centre of the eye. I mark out the lengths and the curls to be used on both gel pads as a clear guide throughout the treatment. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, I'd be very grateful if you help to support my channel by clicking the thumbs up button, sharing this video and subscribing for more beauty related content. Thank you so much. I will check again with my client that she's comfortable and that everything is feeling okay so she's not experiencing any irritation and now I'm ready to begin applying lashes. I like to start with the inner corners and I use a piece of micro pore tape that I've cut to size to gently pull the eyelid outwards. This makes it easier to reach and isolate the fine inner corner lashes. Now I start to apply lash extensions. 
For me, a hybrid set of lash extensions is a combination of individual lashes and volume fans. I make 3D fans, which means three ultra fine individual lashes made into a fan and applied to one lash. I also use the ultra fine lashes as the individuals as well, but instead of three, I will only pick up two between my tweezers and then do not fan them. I dip them into the adhesive and apply immediately. With my left hand, I use a pair of tweezers to isolate a single lash within the inner corner. I then use my other pair of tweezers in my right hand to pick up the lashes, dip them into the glue and place them onto the natural lash. Here you can see how I set up my lash tray. I have a glue holder at the top end of my lash tile and then the rows of lashes start with the smallest lashes at the top. These are C curl 7 and 8 mil. They're then followed by double C curl 9 to 12 mil as they move down the lash tile. Sometimes I will use a jade stone with micro pore tape but this depends on the conditions of my room. It's important to measure temperature and humidity within your treatment room as this will affect how the glue behaves and performs. This will be dependent on the type of glue and the manufacturer, so check the details with the brand you prefer to use. I use a fast setting glue, one to two seconds. However, I still continue to hold isolation while I prepare the next lash. This reduces the chance of stickies. Stickies are when two natural lashes become stuck together. You want to avoid this happening as this can cause irritation and damage to the natural lashes. I continue to work in this method until the inner corners of both eyes are complete. I then gently remove the micro pore tape from the eye I'm going to work on first. Now I begin to create structure for the set following the lash map on the gel pads. I like to place a single lash at the change points along the lash line. So, for example, on the 9mm section, I'll place a 9mm lash just where the transition to 10mm starts. I then repeat for 10 to 11 and so on. For me, this helps to strengthen the visual definition of the lash map, but you could just work section by section, for example, complete all of 9mm and then move on to 10 It just comes down to personal preference. I then continue lashing in this way until the set is complete. Throughout the treatment, I use my silicon wand to brush lashes to ensure they have good placement and good bond. The lash extensions we're creating today is a super natural fluffy set, designed to look natural enough to be almost mistaken for real lashes. My client's lashes are naturally gappier on one side, so I use more fans on that side to create the illusion of a fuller coverage. A taping technique I find really useful is to use micro pore tape to lift the natural lashes slightly up and off the gel pad. This really helps me to be able to attach the lash from different directions, for example, from the underneath side. It also allows me to access the different layers of lashes, giving a more textured finish. I use the tissue as the anchor point for the tape, as this stops too much contact with my client's skin and allows me to manipulate how lifted the lashes are by moving the tissue and not having to reposition the actual tape. Towards the final stages of the lashing, I like to use another taping method to access the very lowest layer of lashes. I take the thin piece of micro pore tape and in the centre, on the sticky side, I apply a small piece of 3M tape. This means that the ends are now sticky, but the middle part is not. I then use this to lift the lashes up onto the eyelid and lightly hold them in place so I can easily access the lowest layer of lashes. It can be fiddly and sometimes it will take me a couple of attempts to get it in the right place, but I find it really helps 
to be able to see and access that lowest lash layer. You can do this without the 3M tape in the middle and just detack the stickiness from the micro pore tape. But for me, I have always found that that still causes lashes to get stuck and potentially pulled off when you remove the tape. At the final step, I now brush the lashes into place and use my tweezers to go through the set and check again for stickies. I will let my client know that the set is finished, but they need to keep their eyes closed for just a little longer. Then I check to see if any lashes have got stuck under the gel pad, make sure everything looks okay for my client, and then I gently remove the pads and tape. And here are the results. The aftercare I give my lash extension clients is to keep them dry for the first 24 hours and then to cleanse daily. Avoid oil-based products, avoid touching, picking or fiddling with their lashes and to keep them looking full, book in for infill appointments every two to three weeks. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Take care.